I've known Ethel probably about uh, 60, 60 years or 62 years. When I was a little girl, um, I went to devotion school and uh, Ethel's store was opened and it was Irving's after Ethel's husband Irving. And um, I would come in with my friends and get candy. And I was probably six or seven years old. I can find it. <laughs> I have, I have a dozen books. Here's how I looked when I. Here's how I looked when I. Um, in, where, where are they? Here, here's, here's how I looked in 1953. Wow. The, the store is so special because of Ethel. It, it's very Ethel. It's, it's like stepping back in time to a wonderful, innocent time, and. And Ethel respects everyone. It's just, you feel so comfortable here. I felt comfortable as a six-year-old, and I feel comfortable coming in here as a 70-year-old. It's never changed. It's always the same. And I told Ethel, you can never retire. I said, never retire, because you just have to always be here. I'm Hannah, and I'm 12 years old. And um, I moved to the Boston area last year. Um, last August, um, and I wanted to make a movie about Ethel Weiss and her store because I think she has such an amazing story. I'm, I'm amazed that the place is still here after all these years, 50 years down the line, and that Ethel, who is, used to serve us back then, is still around. and still doing just what she's always uh, always been doing for all these years. I've been here 72 years. 1939, January 1939, we bought the store, a little store. And um, then in, in 53, we built back into the yard. And what did you do before you worked at Irving's? Oh, I, I lived in Portland, Maine. Before, before I got married. And um, I uh, worked in a wholesale fruit place. She was studied very hard. She did very well in school. I uh, made the most of it. I went to high school. I didn't have to go to college because they taught properly then. I learned all the things I needed to know to, be, to do what I'm doing. My mother, I would say is the brains of the operation. Uh, my mother was an only child and um, she grew up in Portland, Maine and graduated with honors at, at high school. And my father was uh, more of a sportsman. He was playing semi-pro basketball and that's how they met um, when his team went to Portland, Maine. So um, he was more the outgoing person who wanted to talk to all the customers and my mother was the one who she had the business head. Do you carry Poco, Poco Pokemon cards? No I don't. Thank you. <laughs> I don't carry all the uh, all that type thing. They, uh, they're fads and then they're, they're expensive and um, then you get stuck with a lot of them when the fad is over. Yeah I know what you mean. <laughs> What's the history behind the name of the store? Well, Irving was my first husband. Irving Kravitz, he was my first husband. And uh, Irving was weight working in a wholesale, uh, on a sausage place, and he lost his job during the uh, union arguments. And uh, so uh, he was working with somebody who lived around the corner and who knew this store was for sale. 
and uh, we were able to scrape up the money <laughs> to the, the small amount of money that was necessary to buy the business. He, he died in uh, 1960. He was only 47 when he died. I was 17, but I had my whole childhood with him. And he was a Braves fan, not a Red Sox fan. Sorry, guys, but that's the way it is. So I was always a Braves fan because I went to the games with my father. And so I knew the, the uh, players by their numbers. And uh, I sat there, even through a double header, because I was there with my father. Um, so I remember my father a lot in the store and being there and showing me how to ride a bike and um, taking time out from the business and playing catch with me. And When there was a ball game, um, especially World Series time, he would whitewash on the store window the innings and, and post it so the people going by knew who was winning. People came in just to talk to him. Um, everywhere I went, I was known as Irving's daughter, and that was um, that was pretty wonderful even then because I loved my father a lot. He was wonderful, really. Uh, well, the store started out mainly as a grocery store, and then um, it over the years it changed into being more of a toys and uh, candy and that kind of thing, more things for children. There was a big expansion. <laughs> I think it might have been um, in the 50s. It doubled in size. So now, I don't know, let's see, it's probably maybe 30 feet instead of um, 15 feet long. <laughs> it was quite tiny. My bathroom was bigger. <laughs> Irving's is fascinating because it was the community setting, the hub in which we collectively practiced living the values we had learned across the street in the show. We hung out there every day before and after school. Ethel and Irving taught us good shopping manners and how to spend our money wisely. They were role models, although we didn't know the term. We absorbed their integrity and decency as we grew up in their little shop. It's fun to, to see that, uh, that some of these places still, still exist. Almost everything else in Coolidge Corner is different from what it was then, but Irving's is still the same as always. Children that go to, uh, students that go to devotion school always tell me they go over there. Yeah. And that's a highlight of their day. What's the highlight of your day? Well, when the kids get out of school, there's, there's quite a crowd in here. As a little girl, I used to get a nickel or a dime and right. we would walk to Irving's because it was so close to, to um, Devotion School. And it was always a treat to get bubble gum, you know, it was a penny or whatever, or other candy. But as an adult, I still went back to Irving's because as an adult, the first time I went back, the original owner's wife was still there. And I believe she's still there now. And she was, it, she was just amazing. One reason that it's uh, lasted so long is that it's right next door to the devotion school. My mother used to go over there and do lessons for the kids in, in making change. I tell them that they shouldn't um, allow others to buy their, their candy. They shouldn't lend too much money because it isn't good. A lot of children, uh, now they're getting so that they say, keep the change. I tell them that's not a good idea. <laughs> um, she has a very good business head, and the store has survived all the big box stores because she buys um, toys and games and everything in the store is probably under $10. And um, that's why I think it's lasted so long. She no longer sells some of the things that people would stop by for, like cigarettes, like um, lottery tickets. She doesn't sell any of those things. I have 25 cent candies and 10 cent candies, and it used to be a penny, 
it used to cost a penny, but now it's the wholesale prices have gone up so that you have to charge more. But I charge a lot less than a lot of stores. Yeah. Has the, have the customers changed at all over the years, or? The, the, the customers of have been about the same because the school is right here, and the uh, children come in. Their parents come with them, and uh, they. Uh, it's very nice working with them. It's unique. It's, it's one store. It's not a chain. In many stores, many of the individual stores at Coolidge Corner were also unique, but the, re the rents became very high, so a lot of the individual stores had to move out, and there are many chains, and they're very nice too, but they're not unique. This is unique. There's nothing like this around. Yeah, you could almost say it's like a legend or something that and so many kids grew up and going to her store and I just think that that's such a cool thing that like you, somebody can go to a store and then they can take their kids to the same store. I think that that's so awesome that and then like the same lady will be there and if she's... She keeps busy and I think being busy is the best thing in the world for anybody. Just keeps your mind occupied and doing things and meeting people and it just makes life very very interesting. The reason I think she stays so young is because of her attitude, her positive outlook and she is always thinking and trying to figure out new ways of doing things, better ways of doing something and I think that's the main thing. Um, I'd say attitude is everything in life, really. Um, some people will never be happy, if, even though someone looking at them thinks they should be. And, um, but my mother, she just keeps going. This is what I tell the children. I, I wrote this in May 1991. Small store manners. Know how much you can spend. Choose your friends wisely. Don't do what you know is wrong. Show respect for age and experience, not contempt. Consideration of others will allow them to think more kindly of you. So I know you wrote all these posters, like Thoughts for a Happier Life. Why did you decide to do that? Well, somebody asked me, um, how come you look so young for how old you are? And so I wrote these uh, rules in just two days. And uh, I liked it, and uh, I had it published. I, I sell them most every day, because I autograph them, and I say to their name, and, and uh, 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 you know, with happy thoughts, or, uh, and Brookline, and the date. I love meeting the nice people that come in and I encourage them to read my posters and uh, they buy the poster and I'm happy about it because I want to spread good will and good behavior. Yeah, and so she gives everybody that comes in here their advice, which I think it's just such a nice thing to like make the world just a little better. <laughs> so like the first time I came in, um, I was really excited to meet her. And like when you meet somebody new, then like you don't always feel like so comfortable around them, especially if they're like somebody like Ethel that was almost like legendary in my mind after reading about her in my book my books. Well, you know that I first found out about your store when I was living in Baltimore and I was reading the Beacon Street Girls books and then like when I actually moved here I really wanted to check out your store. And uh -huh. A lot of children do when I autograph the books so it makes it more special because I'm in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you signed my book before when I first moved here. So, uh -huh. yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't forget. <laughs> In the Beacon Street Girls books, uh, Ethel Weiss, she was like a comforting sort of figure because most of the characters in the book aren't real. 
but they have like some people that some like characters that are actually real people and she was one of them and so I just thought that was so interesting that they could take real people and then put them into a um, fictional story like there was one girl Maeve who would always go to her if she had a problem or if she was just like feeling lonely and she would go there and she would always buy a bag of Swedish fish and she would talk to her and she'd leave the store feeling happy which is what people should that's what I want people to, when they watch the movie I want them to end and then they'll just feel happy inside I thought it was so awesome that we could make a movie and I was 11 years old at the time and that just seemed like something that was that would just be so cool to be and I still think it's really cool. We, we are so proud of my mother and even in Florida I tell everybody about my mother. They say, um, oh I say I'm going to go home to see my mother and they say, Oh, how old is your mother? I said, oh, she's 97. 97? I said, yep, she runs a store all by herself. Um, and um, it's, she's truly amazing. I, we, my sister and I, when she was up, we ran into one of the customers and she was congratulating us. She was saying, aren't you wonderful? Look how you're doing all of this for your mother and she's able to stay in the store. That's not true at all. My mother is doing the whole thing. I, I don't think she knows how famous she is to people or how much of a memory the whole store is. She's just so sweet and her story is so sweet that... I mean, I can't imagine how somebody could go in there and then leave and not feel happy. I think to a large extent, um, the reason my mother has lived so long is because she looks forward to going in the store and seeing the customers and uh, remembering past generations who have come in. Well, I just think she's such an interesting person to be like 97 and still have this business and have so much character. She is the store and her stamp is all over it <laughs> because I don't want to leave.